in just the last year or two, 3D printing has gone from being something you need to be a little techy and have a little like tech knowledge in order to, to do, to be something that's extremely consumer friendly. So today I'm gonna show you 10 cool 3D prints you can make for your telescope. We are going to start with this. This is just a simple phone holder. Let's say you have a telescope and you want to get into astrophotography, but you don't want to go out and spend all those money on those expensive cameras. But you already have a phone with a half decent camera in it. You could go out and buy one of these fancy phone holders, but you could also print one yourself. The way this works is you print it in a number of different pieces as you screw together. Um, like you don't need any tools to assemble it. You take your eyepiece, you open it up here. We put the eyepiece in. This locks in, locks the eyepiece in place like so. And now we just take our phone, especially if I open it up so it actually fits my phone. Align this approximately over my camera, approximately over the eyepiece, and then just lock my phone in place here. I could now do fine tuning adjustments. I will probably have to move the eyepiece up a little bit so it's closer to the actual camera. Once everything is neatly aligned the way you want it to, this, because the eyepiece is here, means it just slots straight into your telescope. There you go, phone mount. This doesn't have all the like fine tuning knobs that you would get on a, um, on a purpose built one that you would buy. But again, if you already have a 3D printer and you want to get into photography, this is an extremely fast way. I printed this in like an hour and a half. Boom, you're ready to go. Let's go play with it and see if it's something of you. And then you can always decide if you want to upgrade to the real deal down the line. Okay, let's get this out of the way again. And then let's move over and talk about that enough masks. This is probably the most straightforward thing people are going to think about when they are thinking 3D prints for telescopes because it's just a plastic mask that allows you to focus. However, I will argue that the 3D printed masks are actually better than the one you buy because a proper Batonov mask needs to be created. Of course, it both needs to fit the aperture to the size of your telescope, but the fin density also needs to fit the focal length of your telescope. And finding a off the shelf one that fits that is nigh impossible. And the cool thing about the link in the description, if you use that, you can just type in the, the outer diameter of your telescope, the focal length, how thick do you want the walls, all that kind of things. And then you can print one that fits your telescope perfectly. Next up, let's talk about your focuser here. I'm not suggesting you're printing a focuser. I, that would probably not go well as this is a very like high precision thing. The focus I have here on my Newtonian, it doesn't have those like fancy dual speed, you know, 10, uh, 10 and X uh, gear down reduction thing so you can do super fine focus. And that means I'm kind of limited to how accurately I can turn those knobs here. Again, 3D prints can help us. This one is a bit of a fail. I didn't do the measurements correctly. The intention was that you would take these wheels off and replace it with this. However, um, it's too big. <laughs> I didn't measure the distance from the uh, fr from, from the attachment point and into the actual optical tube, so this hits the optical tube. Bit of a fail. I could have printed a new one, but I think you get the idea. Um, this one again is just a generic one I found off um, of one of these like uh, 3D print model sites where you can just download these for free. So I printed this and I thought, oh, that looks pretty cool. That might actually work. It doesn't fit my telescope. It might fit yours or with a little bit of practice with 3D modeling software, you can very easily make your own of these. Um, but yeah, the idea would just be print a bigger wheel for your focuser because instead of having a small wheel to, uh, to adjust, I would now have a much bigger wheel giving me much more fine adjustment over that focuser um, if it would actually have fitted my telescope. We talked about earlier if you wanted to attach your phone and take pictures with that, but what if you want to attach a camera? Well, there is a solution for that. I was a bit skeptical whether this would actually work. This is a T-ring, 3D printed T-ring. It's quite a fine detail thing that needs to slot into all the little grooves here on the camera. I wasn't sure whether this would actually work. I tried to print it. It's not perfect, but it does slot in. It does click in place. And now with a one and a quarter inch uh, nozzle here at the front, I can once again just take my camera, unscrew these, there we go, and it slots in, and you can just lock that in place, like so. And now, my camera is attached to my telescope 
with a simple 3D print. Again, this was one of the more finicky ones. It took a bit of um, bit of a finesse getting all the support materials out for the fine details inside the actual adapter side of it. But with a pair of, uh, of tweezers, I got all of it out. And as you can see now, it just slides in right there, clicks into the camera, and we are ready to go taking pictures. For the next one here, let's say you need to do some work on your telescope. I've taken my, uh, my refractor out here and I wanted to do some work on it. Problem is, usually you would just put it down on the table on this plate. This is fine if it wasn't because the bracket for the um, focuser here actually extends down below this plate. So it's actually riding on that plate, not sitting flush. This is not ideal. It's not a huge deal for this specific setup. But if you're running with a bigger telescope, then you could get into issues. What do you do? You print these, just basic Vixen style uh, feet that you just slide out over the end of your plate here at either end, like so. So I do this with one hand here. Here we go. Now you have feet. This just raises the whole thing up. It gives a wider base. It's less likely to topple over. Again, as I said, if you have a, if you're running with like a big SCT, then just putting it on the plate can be a bit sketchy. It can roll over to the side if you push it. In this case here, it won't now big wide base to sit on. It gets lifted off the table so it doesn't ride on that little bracket there. And now it's just a much more stable um, place to put it. The next one here is actually my own design and it probably shows <laughs> it's not as fine as all the other ones. I got my phone again. Do you know this situation here? You're out, you just set up your telescope, you're doing your polar alignment, and now you have your, your app for whatever controller you have on your telescope running, and you put it in here, you just balance it like in whatever, or you try to hold it with one hand and adjust with the other. No, that's not what we're gonna do today. We're gonna use this, which I designed. This works specifically for my phone in my case. This one fits the phone like so, and then it has clamps here at the back that goes on there like so now my phone can sit right here in front of all my controls and that means as i am um as i'm adjusting it i just set this to auto refresh and now i can sit and i can do my fine adjustments for my pole alignment and my phone will be nicely neatly in view and when i'm ready to go i just take my phone with me or i could just take the entire thing with me like so and we're ready to go again i designed this myself um and you could probably design one very, very easily for, um, for your phone. It's a fun little experience. If you want to try and learn to do 3D modeling, then I think this is a cool project because it's complicated enough that you have something you need to learn, but it's simple enough that even a beginner can design something that, it, that fits your phone exactly. And the next thing is this, which is a collimation eyepiece or a Cheshire Ch eyepiece, I think they're called. It's just basically an eyepiece with a small hole at the top and a cross here at the bottom. This just, again, slots, we we'll just open up that screw again. This just slots right into your uh, one and a quarter inch holder. And you can now, if it wasn't so tall, and I had actually removed the front cap, I could see something, you would now be able to use this to collimate your skull. Again, you can buy these as well. I would actually say this one works just as fine as the one you buy. You can, of course, also buy laser collimators. They are gonna be more accurate, but Again, if you're running astrophotography or astronomy on a budget, 3D printing one of these, literally less than a dollar to make one of these. And I mean, while those veins down here at the bottom could be a little thicker, they're a little bit flimsy, should they break? This takes about less than an hour to print. Let me know if this situation here is familiar to you. You're setting up your scope, getting ready to take some pictures, you're connecting up all your cables and you end up with like a spaghetti of wires everywhere. How about you print some small 3D printed cable management clips? These are print in place. Again, there's no, they just print them, they come out of the bed and the hinge just works straight away. And what you just do with this is just take your cable, say, okay, these two cables here, they belong together. Let's put them in the clip, lock that clip up there. What else do we need that over here maybe? Something like this. Just slowly trying to tighten up the cable. I guess you you get your you get the point here. We can begin to to wrap the cables around so that they don't hang down. Because again, a cable hanging down is a cable that gets snagged. A cable if you can tie it up so that it's a little bit more um, put together close to the telescope, it shouldn't really get snagged as much as they otherwise would. Again, I should probably do something about this cable here as well. 
I could print all of these and I could just manage all my cables and I could probably leave the cable clips on so that they would be easier to set up the next time. Just be careful that you have enough slack in your cables that as the telescope is slewing over the night that you don't suddenly have a cable that's too short that's pulling and gets destroyed somehow the telescope rips itself apart. You know how all your eyepieces they come with these small things and suddenly you know yeet they're gone you don't know where they are. Well why don't you just print one. This is loud. I don't know why it's so loud. Sorry if it picks up. And it's also a little big. I think this one's designed for two inch eyepieces. It's a little big for my one and a quarter inch. They're going to rattle around in there. Um, but again, this was just one I found. I'm going to be linking all of these in the description. But you will be able to take your eyepiece, screw it down there, screw that in, and now you have a storage device for your eyepiece. The last thing I want to show you is very, very similar to the last one. This here is a eyepiece display stand basically. So let's say you have a bunch of eyepieces. We have some smaller ones, medium ones, we have maybe a larger ones. We can put these in here. Now they're nicely on display. It's easy to get to them, get the eyepiece you want. When you don't need them, the print came with a cover. The cover slides over. Oh, there you go. Lines up I'd over like so. And now they are dust free. And next time you need it, you pull the cover off and your eyepieces are nice and easy to get access to um, when you need them during the night. And again, if you are fancy with your um, 3D modeling software, you could put little numbers on here with the, um, with the size of the eyepiece so that they would all have a neat little place to live. I think this is mostly for people with home observatories that all that are observed from home and that want to organize your eyepieces a little bit more than just having them sitting around somewhere on a shelf. I think this is a nice system to um, to both protect them but also have them easy um, available and organized let me know in the comments which of these prints you think was the best or the coolest or if there are other things you think could be fun to print and also a little spoiler i am working on a project with something for my telescope that's going to be also 3d printed but that's going to be able to interface with the esis and there's going to be some electronics in it i'm not quite done yet i'm not sure if i'm going to make it work but if I am, you will see a video about it in the future, so do stay tuned for that. We are once again going to turn to Move, Shoot, Move, and this, which is their Tridapter, and essentially this is a... So in this video, I'm going to give you five concrete recommendations for telescopes for less than a thousand that you can use, and you can then...